Good afternoon, everyone. It is David Schlotthauer here in the Home Weather Office with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for July the 23rd, 2023 on this fantastic Sunday. In this update, we are going to be focusing on Invest 95L and forecasting area of interest coming off of Africa as the last couple of GFS model runs do indicate that this has potential of also developing into a tropical depression or a tropical storm within the next 7 to 10 days. Now, taking a look at the very latest detailed satellite imagery from TropicalTidbits.com or Dr. Levi Cowan, which makes these images possible for us to see. So this is a visible satellite imagery on these three systems that we're looking at right now in the Atlantic. And we're going to be talking mainly about Invest 95L as it is headed towards the southern portion there of the Caribbean, including the southern windward islands. So over Barbados, this could bring in some heavy rainfall, some gusty winds, some thunderstorms, that sort of thing. But the chances of this developing right now are remaining medium at 40% over the next seven days. We'll be looking at that on the NHC in just a second. We have Tropical Storm Dawn. That was a hurricane yesterday. So kind of made a little bit of history, if you will, um, for it being one of the furthest northerly type hurricanes this time of the year in July. We don't expect that to happen yet until pretty much by September and October to see those systems kind of go off towards the northeast. But nevertheless, Tropical Storm Dawn, 65 mile an hour winds, and it is moving off into the cooler waters. Then, of course, we have our third area to watch here. This is an area of interest, so it is not deemed anything by the NHC right now. It has a 0% chance of tropical formation, but this is the wave that we are monitoring, which the GFS has it as a potential area to watch over the next seven days or even 10 days perhaps because it's going to take a while for it to get into the uh, western main development region so that's a look at the areas to watch right now on the map taking a look at the national hurricane center we can see here's a look at the latest from them 65 mile an hour winds as of 11 o'clock this morning on tropical storm dawn Air pressure at 993 millibars. When we do take a quick look at this, you can see it is going to die out really quickly. You can get an idea by Monday. Uh, Post-tropical depression, by all standards, it's going to just get absorbed within the larger scale pattern that is up here to the north. So really no threat at all to the UK. In fact, no models indicate that it's even going to make it over there other than maybe some remnants of moisture but no circulation, so no big concerns at all with Dawn for the time being. So when we take a look here, uh, down here to the south, this has a 40%. Again, satellite images show that Invest 95L has changed little in organization of the small area of low pressure located about 850 miles east of the Windward Islands. Okay, although environmental conditions are forecasted to be only marginally conducive for some gradual development, this system could still become a tropical depression over the next few days while it moves westward across the tropical Atlantic and eastern Caribbean Sea. Interests in the Lesser Antilles should monitor the progress of this system. It will also be um, in the discussion or in the uh, the description of this video too, so you all could read that um, in better detail. But that's the area that we're watching here. This is typically my thumbnail. I usually color this in orange when it's a threat. So we can see here for the Windward Islands, code orange, 40% chance of formation. And of course, there's nothing that is being highlighted yet from the NHC, but I'm telling you, Probably we will need to watch that area in days to come. So now, take a look at our GFS model. We're going to run it through the global models, okay? So the GFS and the Euro, which are my two favorite models. And we're going to be looking at the 850 millibar chart. So this is looking at 5,000 feet. So each layer has different pressure levels, right? So the surface is usually 1,000 millibars. 850 millibars is usually, say, about... 5,000 feet, 700 millibars is roughly about 10,000 feet, 
500 millibars, 18,000 feet, so on and so forth. So this is important because we can get an idea with what the atmosphere is doing. So uh, what you're looking at here is the color map. So we're looking at vorticity in orange, yellow, and red colors. And then of course, these wind barbs show you which way the wind is coming from. And then, and then of course, these lines of equal heights or thicknesses are showing you uh, where the ridges are, where the troughs are in the low levels of the atmosphere and gives us a pretty good idea what our steering future is at the lower levels. So going forward here, let's back this out to here. Yeah, there is Tropical Storm Dawn right there. Here is our ridge. Here is our area to watch. So that's the 40% chance dubbed by the NHC. And here is our area of interest that is located just south of the Cabo Verde Islands. So going forward, that kind of breaks away. We don't see much with that, but there could be a second area of vorticity down here. Now, just take note, folks, the GFS has been known to add in fantasy storms. So just because you see something doesn't mean it's going to actually happen. But assuming with what the GFS is seeing right here on this map might lead to changes down the future or down the road. So this is for Wednesday afternoon, July the 26th, 2023. And you can see there is our wave going through the Caribbean. Even if we back this up, you can see a little bit of vorticity, a little bit of spin right there. Really going to be moving through quickly. You're only going to see quite a bit of rainfall, maybe some thunderstorms and maybe some brief flooding. But I don't see anything destructive like a major hurricane by any... Uh, by any means at all it's going to be a very quick mover which is good right but it's good that you're getting some of the precipitation down there but let's go out to day five yeah this is for friday uh friday morning july the 28th and yeah there is our area right there that is coming off of africa right now what we might have to start watching it's been on the last couple of runs here is um the 060 run if we even go to there, you can see it how it really develops. So, especially on the last two runs is what we're watching. We'll see if it appears on the 0Z run uh, for, or wait, this is going to be the 18Z run coming up in a little while if it appears on there too. So, it's going to be interesting. So let's go forward now to, let's go to Sunday morning, July the 30th. Yep. There is the signature that we look for on the vorticity map of a tropical depression. Now, again, I'm just basing it off of one model. So what I say is probably not true. But what I see, though, too, is a tropical depression. And again, it is my, it's worth watching because this has been on the run for a while. In fact, we go to yesterday's 12Z run. It has been there. You can see it right there. So that's um, one model run, two, three, four, and five. So we know something's going to be there, just about how strong it's going to be. In fact, if we go even further back, yeah, that system's been there for a while. It's just been kind of locked there on the previous six or so runs. So it is my, it, it, we got to watch it. We, that's all I got to say. So going out to now August the 1st or July the 31st, one of those days, you can see approaching the northern Leeward Islands, okay, so like St. Vince and Nevis as well, our Nevis, as well as say the, the British U.S. Virgin Islands, we got to watch that, okay. Uh, the ridge is over here, as we can see the Azores are high, so not a sprawling ridge to prevent development here, so... Yeah, I think the GFS is on to something. I really think so. Just a matter of how strong is to be seen. And then out to, let's go out to day 10 here. Through Wednesday, August the 2nd. Yeah, that's a signature of a strong tropical storm perhaps. And it's only been on the model twice. It's It was there before. You can see the signature. But it really has recently appeared on the last couple of runs. So I'm not ignoring this. I'm sorry, folks. I would love to ignore these things, but when they 
when there's two models back to back agreeing on something, what if the 18Z shows it? The 0Z tonight shows it. We just don't know. But you can see another tropical wave coming off of Africa down the road. So now looking at the Euro model, this is an ECMWF. So one of our more accurate models also showing the same thing. You can see here is our area to watch right now, 40% chance. And again, we have vorticity kind of stretched about with this tropical wave. Even so, the area of interest is coming off of Africa. But going forward, we can see how we get that bundle. Now the Euro shows it developing here. While broad in nature, okay, if we look at the, um, the zero Z run, go to now, it looks a little bit more rounded. So that's something to look for too. And then we can see some vorticity there. Much weaker on the Euro for today though, but still uh, an area of interest, actually a little stronger for Sunday the 30th. And then it kind of doesn't really want to develop. But of course that's the Euro model with another tropical wave coming off of Africa with those westerly winds. So there's going to be more activity to watch closely for. And then when we look at the Canadian model, let's see with what the Canadian shows. I rarely show this for you all. It doesn't show a whole lot, but more aggressive tropical wave activity co co or coming off of Africa. And then the icon model also shows that strong tropical wave right there. So it is, I'm not ignoring this, okay? So that area to watch eventually in the next seven or so days. So invest 95l in the short term yes some of the models are diverging a little bit but still making headway here for the southern windward islands over the next say two to three days bringing again rain wind maybe some thunderstorms nothing too substantial at the moment maybe uh tropical depression force winds are at most what you're gonna see when we take a look here at the intensity forecast we can see um, while there are some models that do indicate that this could become a tropical storm, I just don't have as much impetus. There has been a, a degradation um, between the models um, over the last couple of runs, and so therefore my intensity forecast does not indicate that this will become a tropical storm by any means. Probably not even a tropical depression at all. Okay, so quote me on that. This is probably not going to become a tropical storm or a tropical depression, but I could be wrong. There are plenty of models that are on the high end, but based on the dry air, the shear that this is gonna encounter, I'm just not ready to pull the trigger on a tropical storm yet. And I'm on the lowest end of the intensity forecast, but nevertheless, there will still be impacts, okay? Just because I just said no tropical storm or depression does not mean there will not be impacts impacts could come well through a tropical wave too just let's put it that way even a thunderstorm one thunderstorm could bring impacts all right so here's a look at those sea surface temperatures for the entire atlantic including for the gulf and the caribbean as of july 23rd 2023 as we near an inch closer to august during at which the peak of the atlantic hurricane season gets underway especially in the last half of august these sea surface temperatures are really, really concerning me. They are really warm, especially for this time of the year. I mean, we don't see these sea surface temperatures usually appear until like, say, late August into early to mid-September. Wow, all I've got to say. Very, very warm for this time of the year. I mean, look at Bermuda running at around 28 Celsius. I mean... Usually, sea surface temperatures there should be anywhere between 22 to 24 Celsius. So, it is definitely ahead of normal. The Gulf of Mexico right now running at the mid-80s. So, 85 to 89 degrees. Some areas like southern Louisiana and the southern portion of Florida running in the low 90s for your sea surface temperatures. So, very, very warm. I mean, the Gulf is, I could almost say, it's an idiom. But the Gulf is on fire because of how warm those water temperatures are. Really warm throughout the main development region. Plenty of heat content to get tropical storms or hurricanes to develop out here. If we have a perfect environment with these tropical waves coming off of Africa, they could really utilize that upper ocean heat content and these very far above average sea surface temperatures. 
Speaking of that, here's a look at that map here. Looking at the anomalies, and wow, the main development region definitely well ahead of normal for this time of the year, running at least a degree and a half to two and a half degrees Celsius above the long term average. But there are some areas like right off the coast of Africa, the west coast that is, sea surface temperatures right around three Celsius above the long term average. And while that does not seem like a whole lot because it's in Celsius, it really is a big deal because that means less Saharan dust outbreaks have occurred, lesser trade winds, and most importantly, we have not had a strong subtropical ridge out there to get these winds to strengthen throughout the deep tropics. So that's allowing these waters to really warm up nicely. The Gulf of Mexico running about one and a half to two and a half degrees Celsius. Some areas like right off the Florida coast and the Louisiana coast running about three degrees above normal. Look at the waters up here, the anomalies, very significant, four to even 15 degrees Celsius. Now, the 15 degrees Celsius is not here on the map, but I looked up this on Weatherbell with their OS, I think it's OSST, um, sea surface temperature chart anomalies. And yeah, there was some plots that I have not seen in a while. So definitely some very, very warm sea surface temperatures. And that is why we have Tropical Storm Dawn that is hanging on to its intensity this far to the north. So if we can get a system that far to the north that could be that just be um, got done being a hurricane, only imagine what this portion of the Atlantic, the main development region, will look like during the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season. Now looking at the total ocean heat content as of the 23rd of um, July, we can see lots of upper ocean heat content through the main development region. That is a guarantee. It's this; These are medium to high numbers, but especially over here in the Gulf of Mexico and over the Caribbean this year, a big deal. This is This really gets my attention when we have some of these islands here that are pretty much off the charts with the upper ocean heat content. We got the red colors, 150 to 175. I mean, I'm just warning you folks, if the atmosphere comes together perfectly, we have what we have here, we could be in trouble, uh, or some of you could be um, in trouble, especially the Louisiana coast, the Florida coast, even the Caribbean. If one of these waves is able to develop pretty quickly with this environment, uh, with these sea surface temperatures, look out. It could be really bad. So now before I do end the video, folks, I do want to uh, say thank you all for watching my last video, making good comments on that, hitting the like button. It really means a lot to me because that means we got that video out to almost 15,000 people. So I want to thank you all for that. So do keep doing your job at helping me spread the word here by sharing this video with the family with your family and friends on social media, subscribing to the channel, and also hitting the thumbs up button. Yeah, thumbs up, seven up. Yeah, you name it. Okay, and also leaving a comment in the section below. You guys are awesome. I truly love you guys a lot. And even so, I'm going to work this afternoon. I still have the time at making these videos for you all alongside my second job that I have. I love you guys a lot, and I'll be back with you more tomorrow with another update on the tropics.